Hi, this is Thomas Flight with another quick video essay. One of the things I love most about film as a medium is that a filmmaker can use the visual language of a film to let you see the progression of the story. Like this moment in The Godfather where Michael has to make a phone call about his father. This phone call ends up being the incident that will change things for Michael forever and his physical separation from his girlfriend Kay in the shot as he makes the call foreshadows the relational separation that begins at this moment. It never has to be called attention to, or stated explicitly, and the audience might not even notice it, but subconsciously it reinforces the story, visually. But The Godfather isn't the Al Pacino film I'm going to talk about in this video. Let's take a look at the Panic and Needle Park and how it uses a triptych to visually mark the progressions in the story. Spoilers ahead. The Panic and Needle Park follows the story of Helen, a homeless girl whose friendship and romance with Bobby leads her into heroin addiction. Director Jerry Schatzberg uses three key shots to bookmark each major moment in the arc of the story. In the first key shot, we see Helen alone on the train. This shot establishes for us her problem. She's on her own, and unlike the people crowded around her moments before, she has nowhere to go, nowhere to be. Then Helen meets Bobby, and their relationship solves some of her problems, but she eventually gives in to the temptation of the constant exposure and availability of heroin. Morning. Kill yourself doing that. I'm not hooked, I'm just chipping. Then we get the second key shot towards the middle of the film. We can see the closeness of their relationship and the seriousness of her decision to step fully into Bobby's world. It shows us how their romantic relationship is inseparably linked to Helen's drug use. We can see her shame and Bobby's dread as he knows what the future holds, and how, in a tragic way, now that she's using, when did that happen? they can finally share a big part of Bobby's life, and they're closer than they've ever been. But the story doesn't end there. As the film progresses, their drug use starts to supersede their relationship. It's my wake-up. You stole my wake-up. I needed it. I'll take you back and you steal my wake-up. And in a final attempt to escape from heroin and by extension Bobby, Helen ends up betraying him and ratting him out to the police. The last key shot, and the final shot of the film, alludes to the finality of this progression. Bobby? As Helen chases Bobby, it's clear that any remnant of love has long been overshadowed by the damage heroin has done to their relationship. Helen seeks forgiveness for her betrayal, but as her relationship with Bobby became inseparable from her relationship with heroin, we realize her reunion with Bobby probably means her return to using. Well? When you look at all these shots together as a triptych, you can see the whole arc of the story. Helen is drawn to Bobby out of need and love, that romance leads her to drug use, and finally, they're together but no semblance of love remains. Their relationship is both destroyed and held together by their mutual need for a fix. When I think of the Panic in Needle Park, I think of these three shots. They dug into my brain and they didn't let go. But what makes these shots stick out? 
The first key shot is a long shot that holds after a series of a few shorter shots. This combined with its focus on a single subject amidst the turmoil and motion causes the moment to stick in the minds of the viewer. The second shot is also a longer shot, but it most obviously signals to the audience the significance of the moment by cutting from a very wide angle to an extreme close-up. This close-up is the closest the camera has ever been to their faces together, and it's the most intimate moment we experience between them. To further emphasize this particular moment, the noise of the street falls away. The final shot starts with an empty frame, then reveals the two characters we've been focused on and care about, slowly answering the questions we all have in our minds. What will happen to Bobby and Helen? Will their relationship work? Notice how what clues we get towards the answer come from the blocking of the scene. It's a long shot, and when it cuts to black, the image of the two of them sticks in your mind. You can form triptychs like this from other films as well. Returning to The Godfather, we can use three key shots to show the main arc of the story. Often the memorable shots from a film are memorable simply because they looked cool. But what if you can use single shots to give the audience signposts along the way? A movie is experienced linearly as you watch it, and all at once as you remember it. And I think a good director knows how to craft a film that will be powerful both as you experience it, and as you think back over it in the hours and days after watching it. When you can form triptychs like these out of shots from the film, it speaks to the strength of the visual storytelling. This video is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. And if you're interested in supporting my Patreon, it would go a long way to helping me continue making these videos for a long time to come. In addition, when you support my Patreon, you get extra material like follow-up blog posts I do and the occasional movie review and more. I appreciate every viewer and comment, and if you're new, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.